Hey guys, Spudknocker here. Here we are in DCS World 2.5. Thought I would give a bit of a talk on the history of the map and the what it's supposed to be set up for, which is namely the Russo-Georgian War of 2008. With this mission in the background to help illustrate things. Here we go. Europe. And you can see the beautiful new landscape we have to play in. Flaps up. Whoops. All right. With the fall of the Soviet Union, it was obviously quite a tumultuous time in the history of Eastern Europe, Central Asia, and to a lesser extent, Far Eastern Asia. Georgia, being part of the former Soviet Union, broke away, was one of the first republics to break away from the Soviet Union. as it started to crumble towards the end of the Cold War in 1991. Georgia is one of those countries with many different ethnic minorities in it. 
the majority is ethnic Georgians, but there are also two other groups. Um, Osbakians and Ossetians. Both of those groups broke away in turn from Georgia proper and created their own autonomous what's called oblasts, which basically means territory in Russian parlance. These territories breaking away started a civil war that lasted roughly through 1992 and into 1993 that basically formed nominally independent South Ossetia and Osbakia. Osbakia is behind us along the coast. South Ossetia is where our mission is going to take us today, up in the Caucasus Mountains along the border with Russia. Now Ossetians are linked to Russians more than they're linked to ethnic Georgians. This obviously creates tensions between the two. And basically creates a quasi insurgency that has run from 1992 through to 2008. In 2008, the war is very hard to pin down who started the war, why the war started. It's one of those brush fire wars where the real answer will probably never happen to come out. And it's, the answer is true, probably different for anyone who was a part of the war. And that's just how these small brush fires kind of go. But the kind of the standard Western perspective is South Ossetian uh, militiamen, uh, which is probably a good way, thing to call them, uh, basically started shelling ethnic Georgian villages from within South Ossetia with mortars and light artillery rounds. And in turn, that pissed off the Georgian central government, which certainly makes sense. I wouldn't want my people getting mortared and having artillery fired on them. That wouldn't be cool. So basically, the Georgian military invaded South Ossetia with their primary target being Tushkin Valley, the de facto capital of South Ossetia. I keep marveling at the terrain as we pass by. It's so much prettier than the old Caucasus. The lighting is very nice too. So what got the Russians involved was the, the Ossetian militiamen we're doing better against the Georgian military than most observers would have thought. And so as a result, the Georgian military started to indiscriminately fire artillery rounds into Tishkin Valley and other ethnically Ossetian villages and towns. And this obviously killed and hurt and displaced quite a few civilians. As a result of this, Russian forces, um, namely a large armored division, went through the tunnel through the Caucasus Mountains, which would be those mountains way out there, and basically came to the aid of the Ossetian militiamen. The Georgian military would say that the war itself was started by the incursion of Russian armored forces into South Ossetia, which the Georgian government claims to be its own sovereign territory to this day. The war lasted about five days from late August 
of 2008 through early September 2008. Killed roughly about 200 soldiers and civilians on each side. And the war is very interesting as it pretty much prompted the Russian government um, at the behest of Vladimir Putin to upgrade and increase the training capabilities of the Russian military due to their rather abysmal performance in the war, specifically the abysmal performance of the Russian Air Force. The Russian Air Force conducted bombing raids, usually using Su-25 Frogfoots and Su-24 Fencers, and quite a few of them got shot down. Not by Georgian fighters, because Georgia really doesn't have any, save for a small squadron of Su-25s. They are mostly shot down by man pads, probably old SA-7 Strellas, and SA-2 Guidelines, which are 60s era SAM, uh, radar guided SAMs. As you can see, we're getting a little more mountainous here. Wingmen still back there. The Russian Air Force didn't use any PGMs in this war, and that resulted in quite a few civilian casualties in Rush Georgian cities. The conflict became ever-widening as the Russians joined the conflict. Um, the Osbakians also got involved, and Georgia pushed as or sorry, Russia pushed as far south and occupied the towns of Sanaki. So, and Georgia was pretty much split in half. We one interesting note is that Georgian special forces at one time did actually ambush a Russian armored column inside South Ossetia, pretty close to the tunnel that links jo South Ossetia and Russia, and grievously wounded the, a Russian general who really had no part in commanding an armored column. I mean, he really had no business being there, putting himself in at risk. But it was definitely a victory for the Georgians in that war. The war itself was certainly a military victory for the Russians, Osbakians, and South Ossetians, as South Ossetia and Asbakia became more independent as a result of the war. The true story of the war is very, very muddled due to Russian propaganda, Georgian propaganda, unreliable sources, and all these kinds of things, as well as it's being a, a very recent event in history. So we're going to make a left-hand turn now and start making our way into South Ossetia. We are a mercenary flight hired by Georgia to take out a newly found weapons shipment heading to South Ossetia. It's already evolved, arrived in Tishkin Valley and we are going to try and take it out. We have to be wary of, because this shipment also included newer man pads, so we'll have to watch out for that, as well as we believe there is at least a couple ZU-23s in the area. Oh, I'm pretty far off course make a little bit of right hand turn here. Different sources say different things. 
but it's pretty much agreed upon that the Azbakian Air Force is far more potent than Georgia's Air Force itself. Some sources put it as high as, as four Su-27 flankers being in the inventory of the Azbak Air Force, most likely flown by Russian pilots who are rotated to Azbakia on a regular basis. They also have a complement of about 20, from most sources, Mi-24 Hind helicopters. About 10-ish Su-25 Frogfoots, probably the older Frogfoots, not the Su-25T. Alright, we are heading up on Tishkin Volley here, so we're going to get our weapons set. So there's Tushkin Volley. There's our weapons shipment trucks we gotta take out. Looks like there's only one ZU-23. So I'm gonna make a 360 here and come at this a little bit from a better angle hopefully try to minimize it, my exposure to that man pad down there. This will be a little interesting as we don't have any flares. The South Ossetians do not have any sort of air complement and rely solely on Russian air power for their own defense. This is because there are no airports in South Ossetia. They may have a few helicopters scattered around, but there are no confirmed reports of that. Getting a little bit of altitude here. Put our depression to about 20, which is, seems to be about good for rocket attacks. Alright, I guess he doesn't see him yet. Body fire to Sam. Looks like I got one of the trucks. Flight, engage. Right, let's have him go after the air defenses. Oh shit. Oh, yep, we definitely got hit. <laughs> So, kind of a cool thing that I don't think many people actually know about DCS World is you can, in fact, jump into your wingman's airplane.
Alright, guns armed. See if we can take out that Sam. like I killed him. So because we're mercenaries we don't really care, we're still flying with our Czechoslovakian markings on our jets, so we're probably going to cause an international incident there. not quite as worried about that gun emplacement as I was about that man pad. I think I hit that guy too. Jenkin. New effects are quite awesome in 2.5 here. that guy out. Got rid of those rocket pods, get a little lighter. Definitely need to gain some altitude here. Actually, I'll keep it down lower so we can enjoy the low-level scenery on the way home. So the 2008 war had more geopolitical consequences than real territorial changes. South Ossetia and Sbakia remain independ independent, and their territory did not expand. One of the biggest implications of the war, which really is why it's chalked up to a Georgian loss was the fact that all Georgian, ethnically Georgian people were expelled from South Ossetia 
specifically along the large river gorge, which I am currently forgetting the name of. A little stream there. Just can't get over how good this looks. Did not see those power lines. The South Ossetian militia has been accused of ethnic cleansing as a result of this uh, expulsion of ethnically Russian indiv ethnically Georgian individuals from South Ossetia. They currently claim that it is not ethnic cleansing due to the fact that they did not wholesale kill Georgian uh, ethnically Georgian people. However, they did expel them and their houses were destroyed, entire villages destroyed. This map is just such a new pleasure to fly on now. The old Caucasus map was just so hard to play on, just because it was such an eyesore. And I, re I think it's a really good fit for this L39, for these little coin type missions. COIN stands for counterinsurgency, for those who are unaware, which is totally okay. I recently got reinterested in the L39 because I was allowed to hang out around and crawl around, not crawl, but walk around and, and touch a Warbird L39 here in San Francisco, up in an area called Santa Rosa, just north of San Francisco. It was an L39C model. Still can be armed like an L39ZA, but not as heavily as a ZA. No gun pods or anything like that. Of course, as a warbird here in the United States, it no longer has the ability to be armed. Now I see a lot of people have been having issues with performance in 2.5. And I think this is due to it being a beta. I've had a little bit of an issue, but I've found settings that work for me. Like I've said in previous videos, I have a bit of a high-end rig, so it may not work for everyone. Um, but I've found that the best way to avoid tearing on the screen and just make everything as good looking as possible is to simply have your NVIDIA settings set to enhance the application settings in terms of anti-aliasing. Turn VSync off in the NVIDIA settings and turn VSync on in the game settings. For whatever reason, this seems to work the best. And then you can simply adjust from there to suit your needs, whether you have a lower end graphics card or a higher end graphics card. I currently have a GTX 1080, which I know is a bit of a powerful graphics card. I ended up actually saving around 45 gigabytes worth of space on my computer by s combining the open beta and open alphas as a result of the upgrade to 2.5, which I was very pleased with. So that mission wasn't very successful by a long shot. Well, we took out a bunch of those trucks with that arm shipment, but we definitely got beat up a bit. But I think that's kind of representative of the 2008 Russo-Georgian War and its combination of counterinsurgency and force-on-force -force operations as well as the bad performance of both the Russians and Georgians at the same time. It's a very interesting war in that regard. Now I really hope we can see the Garmin NS430, I think it's called, that was for the Mi8 in the L39 soon, because I think that would be very cool especially after getting to be up the close and personal with a 
Warbird L39 here in the United States because it had a Garmin avionics suite in it. And of course the sight here was removed, which is to be expected. You don't want that big thing in front of your face if you're just going for a nice leisurely flight. Where is our airport? I'm getting close. And our buddy is around here somewhere. At least we finished the mission for him, or for myself. One thing that was very interesting to me in seeing the L39C up close and personal was how much of the original systems and things were kept in place, such as all of the switches for weapon systems, um, radios, uh, engine control systems were kept in place. It's the only thing that really changed was the instrument panel area, and that was basically turned into a glass cockpit Garmin suite with all of the switches and buttons for your engine controls and all of that intact along the sideboards. So there's an airport. That's an uncontrolled airport though. And that is not our airbase, so we are not going to land there. There is our airbase. It looks like our previous plane is in a bit of trouble there. I probably should have just ejected and then switched over to my wingman's plane. In case you're wondering, you can take control of your wingman's aircraft by pressing Alt-J. Right Alt-J. There he is. He's over there. He's in real trouble. He should just eject. <laughs> Katazi, inbound. Uh, yep, that's Katazi. Inbound. Flaps don't seem to want to come down. I'm unsure if that is due to damage I may have received or I'm too fast. Like I said, I'm not a huge expert when it comes to the L39. 